Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by Sportsman's Warehouse, Counts Marine, the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, and Avery Superstore. Hey, welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 here in Memphis, Tennessee. And all you good folks out in Brownsville on 1520 AM and 95.3 FM. Of course, the good folks at News Talk uh, 101.5 in Jackson. And, uh, of course, this is uh, second Saturday. And, as again, as I said earlier, that uh, John Gordon will join us later in the show. But Ron Wong is here. And uh, good morning, Ron, again. Hey, good morning again. Uh, It's always good to be here. And, uh, man, we got some interesting stuff we're going to talk about, you know, for the rest of the segment here or the program this morning. Yep, yep. We're going to talk a little litter now. Have you, uh, you know, does... Uh, when I came to Memphis a, uh, a long, long time ago, we were known for being a clean city. But uh, mm. did you know, and I'm going to let this guy, when we talk to him in just a minute, I had no idea that 100 pieces of litter on Tennessee roads at any given moment, and 18% of that will end up in the waterways. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you've seen you that. Look at- you know, with, with the high water flooding conditions that we have throughout the Mid South now, yeah. If you look in the backwaters, that's where they're going to be. It is just the banks are full of litter. You know, it all floats back up towards the bank. Well, and you know, I can't tell you. You know, you all would. of us go to the grocery store or whatever. We got a gazillion of these little plastic <laughs> bags. Carry one with you. Tie it around your belt loop. I keep one in my car just to put trash in. Well, I got one in my boat. Now, if I'm going to be hiking around, I'm going to have one tied to my belt loop. I want you to keep your camera available, too, because uh, our good friends uh, at the Tennessee Wildlife Federation I have something going on that I think is a pretty cool idea. They want your photos of litter. I mean, uh, after a Can lifetime of litter, them we've learned to overlook it. So who better to talk about this new idea uh, than the man himself, uh, the uh, CEO of the Tennessee Wildlife Federation, our good friend Mike Butler. Good morning, Mike. Morning, Larry. How you doing? Now let's talk about first the uh, the uh, the idea of this uh, trying to get people to submit photos of litter. Well, it really started, we started seeing a lot of new research come out on plastics in water and yep. litter yeah. affecting wildlife not just in Tennessee, but globally. And it occurred to us, it's become so ubiquitous, so common Uh in our uh, environment that we just kind of have grown blind to it. And so the idea is to say, all right, everybody's carrying around an iPhone now. Yes, they are. Or or some other device to take pictures. So let's open our eyes up and look around us. And take a look and see how bad the problem's gotten. And with the advent of our disposable society in the la- in my lifetime, at least the last probably 30, 35 years, right. where it's easy. I mean, cell phones are now almost disposable, <laughs> yeah. much less, yeah. you know, anything that you drink from or eat out of or, you know, the proliferation of uh we eat, we eat out a lot more than we ever have. Yes, yeah. And that creates a lot more waste. And so you, you add all this up, and you end up with something that's creating a real problem that's impacting wildlife across the state. It's really impacting other sectors, like economic development. When, when I mean, a litter on the side of the road in a community speaks volumes to people that are trying to locate businesses. Yeah, I agree with that. Areas. Yeah, don't you agree with that, Ron? Oh, I mean, no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, it the, the, well, I mean, then you talk to the folks that are doing, um, you know, the other piece, the other big one is agriculture. Yeah. Talk to a cotton farmer about what some of this stuff does to a, a baler. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, or what it does to, a, to to livestock. And you start to get a real quick picture that we've got a problem that we need to fix. And you've come up, uh, you guys are always looking for ideas, uh, uh, and you've come up with this to uh, have people submit litter pictures uh, just to open the eyes of people that might not realize this. 
uh, how bad an eyesore, not only just from the, from the, the beauty of our great state, but from the uh, the economic side, and you've pointed out these other things, uh, 230 tons of trash the TVA removes wow. from the Tennessee River in 2018. Wow. Golly, that's more than all Look, my cousins way together. So, I mean. Uh, <laughs> that's right. I mean, TDOT's spending, I think they estimated $15 million a year on their litter grants program. Golly. And, and, and it's a lot of good work. Yes. But, but, but. It's it's scratching the surface. Just scratching on the problem. Yeah, scratch. And here, here's here's the real twist on this. We believe that there is value in some of the waste that is on the landscape that is being produced that people are throwing out in the fields that could be harnessed. Yes, and taken to market and taken advantage of from an economic standpoint that could help fund a broader solution that would help not only incentivize behaviors to keep litter off the landscape, but help clean up what's already there, because we've got plenty that we need to go pick up. Well, you're talking about recycle or whatever it might be, and I I, I know I've seen, uh, and I've been a part of Adopt a Highway, you know, when we've uh, done these sections of highway to keep it clean, and what we find is amazing and I was not brought up like that. Now, now I know I got some young listeners out there today. My parents did not litter. Okay, I don't ever remember my grandparents littering anything. So if you're brought up with the idea you can throw a cup out the window, or wherever it might be, or if you're hunting, even this, if you're if you're out there, and Ron will say this for fishing, you thought toss something in the water. It's there's just. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong. Go south on it. And, and it, and, and it, inevitably it does. And, you know, the thing about it is, is, you know, sometimes we don't think about what some of the causes can be, but there's just no sense in lettering. And that's what Mike is, uh, uh, with the Tennessee Wildlife Federation has come up with this. Uh, what do you expect, uh, what's the... Uh, well, uh, the feedback you're getting, Mike, and and, and talk about that, and, and what, what do you hope through this uh, by people submitting these photos uh, that you're going to learn from? Well, I think, first of all, we, we really had no preconceived notion on how much response we would get. Yeah. Um, but we've gotten, I think, a couple hundred photos already. Oh, you yeah, really? Okay. Wow. Very long. I yeah. mean, people are responding at a high level to the to the request. I think, you know, it can only help us generate more awareness because yeah, in the right. end, what we're going to be looking to do is sit down and talk about solutions. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and you can't really get to the point of talking about solutions until you have a complete understanding of how big the universe is on the problem. How and, long will you know, that program go, you know, in gathering information? Is there any well, timetable? Well, not well. I, you know, we want to start talking about solutions probably later this year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and and we want to start talking about solutions with uh, folks that are not just in the conservation community. Yeah. We want to be talking to people that are in the business and industry industrial complexes sure. in Tennessee. We yeah. want to talk to people in the agricultural complex in Tennessee. Um, there, I can tell you that our our ag interest in Tennessee. Have all, have identified this as a problem for for a long time. Long time, yes, yeah. And, and I think that it's it's you know now we're starting to see what I think. I think one of the things that really got people's attentions is when the study came out showing that there's more microplastics in the Tennessee River per cubic meter of water than the Rhone or the Rhine River in Germany or the Yellow River in China. You hear that, Ron? And, <laughs> wow. Is that not amazing? And, when, and, and so he, here's the thing. I mean, we're seeing plastics show up in the bellies of fish. Um, yeah. We, we know that certain plastics leach things that disrupt what is called the endocrine system of yeah. fish, which uh-huh. affects their reproduction. Yeah. You know, and here's the other thing. Who likes litter? <laughs> it's like Asian carp. Yeah, <laughs> there, it's easy to hate litter. Yes, yeah, and, and which tells me there is a there is a win here. There is a way to bring a lot of different people from a lot of different viewpoints that can raise the same concern, and we can fix it. This is doable. 
it's just going to take a lot of hard work and some and some creative thinking. Well, I'm, I'm, I've got a quote here from you in, in the press. Litter is such a big and old problem that we've all become blind to how much of it there is in our lives every day. Uh, when you said That's that, correct. Mike, it it, uh, it it hit home to a lot of uh, it did to me because uh, I think a lot of people are blind to this. So we we have blinders and we don't know that. You know there are there are fines for littering, but our our, our uh, well for public littering now yes yeah there there's fines. fines but however how much time do our enforcement yeah enforcement is uh well and and I think that's a great point you guys raised I think it's going to take a multi pronged approach I'm not we don't have to go create a bunch of new laws or increase no we no we can <laughs> use some of the tools we have and maybe enhance some others that are develop some new ones we need. Um, but it, again, it's a, it's a matter of just making the decision we're going to fix it. Because I'll tell you what got my attention, Larry. What's that? I was for some meetings not too long ago, and I had a meeting over at Lone Oaks that uh-huh. you're very familiar with. Yes. Uh-huh. And I drove Highway 57 uh, across, and I was taking a guy from Colorado that was out here to talk about chronic waste and disease. Uh huh. Um, because he's he's researched, he's lived with it for years. And we were driving Highway 57 all the way over to um, Lone Oaks where we were, we were going uh, to see some people. Yeah. And I, I took him to see Shiloh. Oh, And the okay. amount of garbage on Highway 57 was astonishing. Yes. Yeah. I just came back, uh, uh, Tennessee Outdoor Riders. We were up at uh, at uh, at uh, Natchez Trace State Park, and we went over to Shiloh. And, and, that just go, and then we, I came back home. Ironically, you say I came back all the way back home. On fifty-seven. Uh, well, let's. Uh, we we got to get. So, how do they submit photographs? What what do we do here? I think they. Uh, it's you go to our website and we've got a big uh, image on the very front page, and you just click that and follow the instructions. It's simple, it's simple just to upload your shots there. Tnwf dot org and send them in. And uh, Mike, thank you, buddy. As usual, always good to talk yes, to sir. you. We'll stay in touch. It's okay. Fun. All right, man. Until thank you. Time. All right, right, let's take a break. Come right back on Outdoors with Larry Ray. 